Hey everyone, so today I want to talk about Look Who's Talking, the 1989 film and before I get in with this I just want to say this is probably one of, if not the best films I've ever seen. It is sensational, a lot of people said you know you need to watch it and I kind of thought right I'm in the mood for a Kirstie Alley film because Kirstie Alley is probably my all time favourite actress on par with Helena Bonham Carter. So as long as Kirstie Alley is in a film I'm gonna love it and I thought right which one will I watch? People said Look Who's Talking is good. Um, I thought, not really sure what to expect from it. I've kind of read the plot a little bit and thought it sounds a little bit typical, a little bit normal, nothing unique. I couldn't have been more wrong. This is one of the most compelling, most just sensational films I have ever seen. So the plot, as I said, does initially sound very basic. Um, basically, Molly has an affair, um, she falls pregnant, and then she's left to raise the kid on her own. And then, you know, she's looking for a husband, and then this typical guy comes along, and is he, is he going to be the one... Who will turn out to be her husband or her, the father of her baby? Is she missing what's in her face? Very normal plot. Single mother raises a baby, looks for a father for the child. But the way it's done is one of the most exciting things ever. Um, first of all, John Travolta plays James, who is our male protagonist in this. And he, I, honestly, I didn't think, I've never seen John Travolta in anything other than Grease um, that I can remember. So I kind of thought, I'm not really going to enjoy this because I'm only ever going to see him as Danny. No, I absolutely loved him as James, it worked completely and I will now go and purposely look for other John Travolta films because it worked on levels that I can't describe. Kirstie Alley as Molly I think is perfect, you know, she, I couldn't pick a better actress for the role, she is sensational. Um, and then we have the voice of the baby by Bruce Willis, um, in the baby's voice we get to hear pretty much very early. There's a very peculiar scene, that basically it's the second scene of the film. Um, I'm not going to go see what it is, I'm going to let you watch it and find out, but it is the most bizarre thing to watch ever. Basically it's just after she's had an affair. And it's very peculiar. And then we get to see certain certain scenes of this little baby growing inside of her, which is kind of creepy. But considering this is 1989, it's sensational how well it's done. You know, you kind of think it'd be a bit grainy and a bit fuzzy. Cinematography inside her room is phenomenal, which is something I never thought I'd say. But it is gorgeous, and it's a little baby, and it, he's such a funny, witty little baby. Well, witty little fetus, I guess. And there's one particular thing he says about a third arm, which honestly I nearly cried with laughter even thinking about it just now. I want to laugh. It's it's one of the best things ever. And this humour carries through when the baby is born, and um, this baby is named Mikey, and we get to watch him grow up to about I think maybe three years old, possibly. Um, but he's about one two years old for the majority of the film and we get to hear his thoughts through Bruce Willis's voiceovers and it's hilarious. I mean a lot of it is told through Mikey's point of view which is peculiar for a film because you rarely get a story told through a baby's point of view but this voiceover enables this to happen and a lot of the things he says really will impact the way you think of, on other children. Next time, Once you've watched this film, next time you're outside and you see a baby you add a voiceover for what they're, what they're thinking. It's very odd but it's very funny and um, I've never laughed so much in my whole life mainly because of the script for, the, for Mikey, for the, the script for Bruce Willis it's hilarious, I love Molly as a character, I think she is fantastic um, she goes on a couple of very funny dates what annoys me is that there are one or two times when Molly and James are this close to getting together and you think come on just get out, you know you know what's right why can't you see what's in front of you and I'm not going to tell you whether they get together in the end or not because that'll ruin it but I do think that certain things in this are just sensational, there are certain scenes which are quite gripping. It is, for the most part, hilarious, but there are one or two emotional scenes. What I like about this as well is that even though it is about a single mother trying to raise her child, it's not typical, woe is me, I'm a single mother, I haven't got time for a social life, life is hard, you know, I can't do anything. It's not like that, mainly because of the presence of James, but I do like that they've taken a different angle with it. It is fantastic, very hilarious. Um, an hour and a half in length, which although normally I'd say is a, a perfect length for a film, I could have been happy if this was two hours, three hours, four hours. Just the character of Mikey I absolutely love. A couple of people on Twitter did say that the, um, what was it, Look Who's Talking 2 and Look Who's Talking Now or something like that, the, the second and third in the trilogy, um, are not as good. But I will give them a watch because I can't not. This is one of the best films I've ever seen. Of course I've got to go and watch the other two. 
but I will happily watch this again and although I kind of tend to wait at least like four or five months to watch a film again if I love it um Sweden Todd aside I kind of I want to watch this now I only watched it yesterday and I want to watch it again that's how great it is please feel free to leave comments and let me know your thoughts that's it for just now so I'll see you all next time bye